morning. Uh, my name is David Vivas. I'm a legal officer at the Office of the Director uh, uh, for Trade in, in, in Good and Commodities uh, in ONTAC, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Uh, I would like to thank the invitation by the Geneva Environmental Network to comment, to provide insights of this uh, interesting film titled Fish on My Plate. I think this film is a welcome contribution. It, it allows uh, to provide a, a perspective that gives us an uh, opportunity to reflect about the global status of fisheries and also on how we consume and produce uh, today. It's also an interesting approach uh, based on the fact that the, 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 the producers uh, seek information in different countries, interview different stakeholders with totally different perspectives, trying to show uh, information that is as impartial as possible uh, and based on empirical and, the, uh, uh, and, and data sources. Uh, um, I will be providing comments about this film about uh, three key topics. There are many topics covered by the film, but I will focus only on three. The number one will be overfishing, the issue of overfish stocks. The number two will be, is aquaculture a potential alternative? And to what extent we can do something about it? And finally, some, some uh, comments on, on fish and nutritional facts around fish, which was the entry point of the film, looking at omega-3, but also the closing point in the film. Uh, on the topic of overfishing, uh, I think we need to be uh, uh, to understand that today, 34% of global stocks are overfished. So more than one third of all the fish in the world is in danger, is being overfished, is being fished below the sustainability levels. And that's huge for a, for a, for a global commodity and a, 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 a natural resource. Uh, the catch of fish reached about 90 million tons in the year 2000. And since then, the production, the catch has been steady. It has not come up, it has not come down. Uh, what does that mean? It means that, that we have reached the limit. I think people need to understand there is no more fish. Management has improved. Management of stocks have improved over the last two decades in many countries, even in developing countries, but still there is a lot to do. At that 34% of, of fish stocks below sustainable levels is the reflection that we don't have management everywhere and on all species, and we still have actions and behaviors that generate pressure on the stocks that may not be reversible with time. Now, the causes of overfishing are very diverse. They are very, they, they, they are multifaceted, they are complex. They include several factors. First, the emergence of industrial fishing since the 1970s. Again, in the film is mentioned that about 4 million boats, uh, fishing boats are outside actively fishing. Of that, about 2.5 million are motorized uh, vessels, which can have a higher capacity uh, to fish for longer and further. Uh, but we have also other important factors like illegal fishing. We have corruption. We have harmful subsidies. We have land-based pollution. And we have an increase of use of many technologies that allow very targeted fishing. So they become, the fishing today is very effective. So you can effectively deplete if you will have the, if you will have the time and the capacity to do so. Also, there are more nations engaged in fishing. Uh, by the 1970s, most of the nations fishing were traditional developing countries and some developing countries. Now, many countries are fishing within their own economic exclusive zone, but also in the high seas, increasingly in the high seas. Uh, uh, perhaps what we're seeing on the issue of fishery is a tragedy of the common. It is a race for the appropriation of the last group of public goods on the sea, uh, UN clause and subsequent UN and FAO agreements are trying to put some order on the matter, but the capacity to enforce is very limited and done directly by states. And states may have contradictory interests or have, have can have different vested interests within their different stakeholders that imply different action from strong to more timid in the quest towards sustainability. Now, this global catch of about 90 million tons only satisfies half of the global demand. So even if we're catching almost everything we can, we can only supply fish for half of the consumption in the planet. The other half 
is coming mainly by aquaculture, which is taking a larger role as the wild fisheries cannot grow and the population and consumption of the planet continue to grow. Besides these facts, there is an important issue, which is that even within the current fisheries and aquaculture activities, there is a lot of waste in different parts of fish. There is a misuse of the catch, and what was mentioned during the during during the film, which is, was the use of anchoveta to produce fish meal and fill oil, fish oil for aquaculture, animal feed, and even for fertilizers. So many of things may need to change in case, and and try to find more efficient and more effective uses of what we can catch and also we may need to 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 better manage and reduce the the fishing in many species and resources in order to improve the current status uh, of 34 percent of fishing uh, below sustainability levels so i have a first key message we need to better and in a larger scale improve sustainable management we have management, stock management, mostly for highly commercial species. We need to shift the incentives and the use of public resources, but also private resources from intensive fishing to sound management, to sustainability, to alternative blue economic activities that may allow communities to move from one economic activity that doesn't have a future, so it can uh, stocks can be re rebuilt, to other activities that also could bring income to home, including tourism uh, or a sustainable aquaculture, etc. Now, we also need to change the way in which we produce and consume. For example, the fact that anchoveta is only marginally consumed by humans, even in Peru, where the film shows the example, uh, is linked basically to culture and taste more than to nutritional facts. Anchoveta is a fantastic product from the nutritional point of view, but culture and taste, like it's a small fish with a, 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 and, 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 and doesn't have like a lot of uh, flesh and, and can be produced into very nice fillets, uh, means that people don't, don't tend to like it over other species. Now, the second point I wanted to talk is uh, the issue of, is aquaculture an alternative? The emergence of aquaculture over the last three decades decades has been mainly driven by the consumption and demand of highly commercial species of high value, usually some of them, shrimp, tilapia, pangasus. Uh, uh, aquaculture, as I mentioned, supplies the, the, the demand uh, for the other uh, for the other half of the planet. You know, the, the, the first uh, the first half, the, the half of the demand is comes from a supply by wild fisheries, the other half by aquaculture. Now, we have to separate the fact that there are different types of aquaculture. You have aquaculture in land control. You also have mariculture that implies that certain aspects of the farming are done on seas, on open seas, in fjords, in, in, in estuaries, etc. Uh, aquaculture is a, uh, intensive aquaculture. Industrial aquaculture is a relatively new economic activity. It has less than 30, 40 years. Uh, and it has many problems in terms of externalities. For example, mariculture is not a fully controlled cycle. The case presented in the in the in the film is the one of salmon. Salmon is an adronomous species, meaning it lives partially in fresh water and partially in, in seawater. And the reproduction cycle happens in fresh water while growth happens in, in the salty water where the mariculture takes place. So you can grow the fish to levels that can be consumed by humans. Now uh, 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 mariculture and certain forms of aquaculture have many, again, uh, important negative externalities, including uh, pollution, including uh, the destruction of biodiversity, such as mangroves, including the use of antibiotics, chemicals, etc. Now, uh, it was shown clearly in the film that some of these negative externalities are being addressed partially through smart management in some farms, not all. We need to, we need to do a huge change in the way we 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 uh, manage uh, aquaculture uh, mariculture uh, activities uh, we need to improve in terms of inputs in terms of output processes and how we handle externalities which are not always negative you may also have positive externalities and i can give examples below now it is important also to know that the type of uh, aquaculture that is being criticized in the film is the one focusing on carnivore species mainly 
This means the type of uh, aquaculture that is taking place on, on fish that eat other fish and that usually is taking place at the sea, like salmon. Uh, in this regard, we need to, to, to uh, inform the consumers that there are also uh, there is also farming and aquaculture of herbivores, meaning fish that do not eat other fish. And the typical example is carp. Okay, so there are also herbivore alternatives, only that the most tasty and the higher value for market purposes are the carnivores ones, are the ones taking more by the consumers. In the process of aquaculture, they're having some improvement, especially in the fish pet mix. Uh, lately, there have been an expansion to include not only fish meal and fish oil, but also vegetable proteins and fats such as coconut oil and certain agricultural ways, which would enable a more circular and economic approach to aquaculture. The film shows uh, very interestingly, honestly, that there are other type of uh, uh, farming activities, aquaculture activities. One of them is the silf shellfish and the other is the seaweed aquaculture. The selfish is a very interesting one because the selfish filters water. So you can have the, 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 the for example, the mariculture for salmon, trout, trout, and other species, and at the same time have the selfish nearby to filter the water and create a better cycle. Also, you can use uh, the, the farm, you can uh, also make use of the farming for seaweed. I think the potential for seaweed farming production and consumption is huge by any scale. As shown by the film, seaweed farming needs very few inputs and there is less interaction. Also, uh, uh, this uh, the expansion of uh, shellfish aquaculture and seaweed aquaculture could be considered uh, blue economy opportunities for diversification in many island and coastal countries. For example, uh, ONTAC, the United Nations Conference on, on Trade and Development, is promoting the use of CMOS, which is a type of seaweed, as a food complement very nutritious in the Caribbean, and also to, pro to enable the use of invasive and non-edible seaweeds, such as sargassum, to produce personal care products, such as soap, and also fertilizer. So we can also use the non-edible uh, seaweeds to produce products and make a, a, a more uh, a strategic use of marine resources. Then here I have a second message. Uh, sustainability for the aquacultural sector is in the making. We can only control the life cycle of certain species, no more than 100 today. So there is a lot to be learned. There is a need for more sustainability, smart management and diversification. New forms of aquaculture and the expansion of a species being a, a farm could bring economic opportunities for many countries. The third point I will be making today is about fish and nutritional facts. It was mentioned at the, at the beginning of, the, of this commentary. The omega-3 was co uh, consumption and its benefits over health, especially over heart uh, health and heart diseases, uh, was uh, per presented as an entry point. Uh, omega-3 is only one of the good micronutrients that we find on fish. Those are really uh, valuable for a balanced diet. Uh, it's important to consider that ne a human needs not only to eat some healthy food, but they need to have a diverse and balanced food diet based on different types of proteins, lipids, sugars, uh, vitamins, etc. And just to show, you an show an example in the ocean's realm of how an unbalanced diet can affect health, what is the case of uh, the so-called scorbury or uh, escorbuto in Spanish and Italian, which was the main disease affecting seafarers and fisheries before the 20th century. What is escorbuto? It's basically a deficiency in vitamin C and is generated by the lack of consumption of fresh foods, fresh vegetables, and also animal entrails. So fishers and seafarers could be eating fish all over their mission at sea for months, and that wouldn't stop scurvy to come in and affect the, 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 the seafarers. Why? Because you need to also introduce in your diet fresh vegetables, fruits, and certain, certain type of meats. If you don't do, you will be suffering from particular diseases. So this is an example that, that balance is key. Diversity is key, and diversity is not only good, for a good diet. It's also good for good consumption and good production. Uh, the fact 
that uh, during the film, the gentleman that was eating fish for more than a year or for about a year show imp uh, not great improvements in terms of omega-3 means that only omega only certain amount of omega-3 can be absorbed by the body, but, but the results were positive. And second, even if you eat more fish, so there is a limit of what the body can absorb. And second, uh, uh, it's important to know that he had he had the results of the test uh, that he was doing after this year on his health and 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 and, and blood system, etc., show a, 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 a significant amount of mercury, uh, which is a poisonous uh, uh, metal, a heavy metal that can affect uh, our system, even our life. Uh, so the fact that 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 mercury was found and other heavy metals were found in this test uh, of a person eating a lot of fish reveals that pollution in the oceans is definitely a problem. It is affecting our diets. And this is not only true for mercury, it's true for plastics, it's true for many other forms of pollution, including persistent organic pollutions. So I have a third and final message. We need to protect our oceans, we need to protect our fish to ensure a diverse diet. A healthy diet needs to be accompanied by other foods of and, uh, and fresh sources. Uh, this is not new. Balance our diversity needs to always be there. We need to clearly stop pollutions, both of terrestrial and marine ecosystems. We are starting to eat what we throw away. So if we don't control, manage, we're throwing away, reducing, reducing, and recycling, and taking out from nature, it will come back into our dish. So the way in which we produce and consume will have each day a higher impact on our diets and on our daily life, on our health. So in an overpopulated planet, sustainability is not a choice. It's not a luxury. It is the only way forward. With that uh, green message, um, thank you again the Green Environmental Network for this invitation. I congratulate the producers of the film, Fish to My Dish, and, uh, uh, and I hope this film helped to uh, improve the environmental and consumption education of all uh, citizens in this small but lovely planet. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day.